Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the series of solving problem statements using Java. In this episode, we are going to solve the fourth problem statement. And the problem statement is, if we put up, if I try to put up in simple terms, we are going to write a program to solve different types of uh, different elements, that is n elements, where the n is the number of elements to sort using the quick sort method. And we are going to write the program in Java as we have written all other programs. And at the bonus, we are going to even calculate the total number of time it, the algorithm took to sort different elements, that is the n elements. And with that said, let's jump back to the source code on my iMac and try to analyze how the source code has been implemented and definitely even check out the output. Now with that said, let's jump. Boom! Here we are in front of our iMac and <clears throat> let's begin with the implementation. I have opened up with my source code in front inside of Visual Studio Code. As you can see at the line 12 and 13, I have imported two statements. That is one is random class to generate random integers and one is scanner class to scan the inputs from the user. After this, if you look at the source code, I have implemented two classes, namely source and quick sort. Now, if you are using Visual Studio Code as I'm using here and you have installed Java extension pack which is provided by Microsoft. Whenever you declare multiple classes in a single file, you get the following error. Now if you hover over the error on quicksort class, it will provide you with the information saying that the public type quicksort must be defined in its own file. Now that's an ignorant error as we have very few lines of code rather than creating multiple files. I thought of creating it in a single file and implementing the whole program. So you can, you guys can ignore that error. It's none of the harm. Now let's begin with the quick sort class. Now, if I try to open up the quick sort class, as you can see, I have implemented two functions inside of quick sort class that is partition and another one is sort. Now let's begin with the sort function. As you guys can see, it's a public function. That means we are we can access this particular function outside of the quick sort class even, and we are not going to return any particular value. So it's a void return type, and I have given name as sort. It has got three parameters. One is an array of integer type, and two variables of integer type that is low and high. Now, if I try to open up the sort function. And yeah, before we understand what's the what does the sort function does, it is used. To, it acts like an wrap up wrap function where it is it is going to use recursive uh, recursion recursion techniques to sort the array that has been provided as a parameter. Now, if you open up the sort function, as you can see, I have written one if if statement, and inside of the if block, I have written three lines. And if block says if low value is less than high, we are going to come inside of the if, if block and we have a particular, we are declaring and initializing an integer called yes. And this particular statement tells us that we are going to call the partition function of this class. As you guys can see here, I have implemented this function with the same parameters which are being passed for sort that is a low high. Now what this particular function does, we don't care as of right now, we'll get into that in a minute. Consider ju just we are concerned about what data type it is going to return, that is an integer. Now imagine this particular function after compiling, we are going to say we are going to get the value as 3. Now yes holds the value as 3. Now as you guys can so see, the recursion technique is nothing but calling the function inside of itself that is we are going to call the sort function again with the parameters as a that is an array the low value as keeping it as it is but high value as yes minus one now as we have imagined yes value is three now three minus one is two now this function runs again and we are going to partition the array and we get we might get another value and after that <coughs> at line 145 we are going to pass another 
sort function we are going to call it recursively and we this time we are going to pass the same array and inside uh, in place of the low variable we are going to pass the value as yes plus one now if you guys remember the yes value previously held was three now this time it will get passed as three plus one four and the high value whatever the high value that is being passed now that is for the quick uh, sort function now let's look at the partition function let me just close this collapse this sorry now for the partition function inside of quick sort class i have used private as an access modifier now if you guys don't know what a private access modifier does is we cannot when we use when you declare a private a particular function as private you cannot access that particular function outside of the class now with that said <clears throat> for partition function i have used the return type as integer now we are going to return an integer value now as of sort function we are going to use the same parameters that is we are going to use three parameters which is an integer array and two variables of integer data type that is low and high respectively now let's try to expand the partition function and look inside of it inside of partition function i have declared a temporary variable which says says as temp and you i'm going to use it to store the uh, integer value as for a temporary basis so let's just keep it there and after this i have initializing and declaring three integer variables first one holds the a of low which says <clears throat> i'm going to use as you guys can see the comment i'm going to store the first element of array now on what basis am i saying that low value will be zero why it may be five it may be more than zero so the first the reason why i'm saying the first element of array is because as you guys remember array index starts from zero and for the initial call of the partition function low value will be the first index of the array now the first index of the array starts from zero and it's not minus one and for example if user passes that is me and if you are writing this program it will be you now if user passes low value as one now this particular function will ignore the zeroth element of the array and we are not going to sort it so that is the reason why i call it the first element of array for low now one more bonus thing i would like to say here for you guys is i'm not going to use any particular values for low and high and try to trace this particular program because we are going to dive into a lot of confusion and which is beyond this scope of this video so for my recommendation for you guys is assign particular values for low and high and try to trace this particular function and you will get a, a better idea until and unless you try to do it no matter what whichever youtube video you ask watch or no matter how many questions you get or ask your friends it's not of no use try to trace it on your own with particular values and you will get the idea now <clears throat> after this i have declaring and initial initializing another variable called i which is going to increment the low value sorry we are not going to increment we are just going to add the low value with one now if low as 99 percent of the time it's for the first time it is going to hold the zero value that is zero plus one is one now integer j is going to hold the high now high value can be <clears throat> we can consider it as number of elements in array now that is n value it may be 100 1000 10000 5000 doesn't matter now after this i have written a while loop which has the condition until and unless low value is less than high value we are going to execute these particular instructions that has been written inside of the outer while loop now <clears throat> before we get inside of the while loop let's try to assume a condition where if low value is not less than high value 
we are going to not going to execute this particular while loop and we are going to directly come to the last line of the partition function which returns the value of j if you guys remember j holds the value of high we are going to directly return it to that now coming back to the first condition if low value is less than high value we are going to come inside of the while loop after this we have one more loop which has which has the condition until and unless a of i value is less than or equal to p value and i value is less than high value now if you guys remember i holds the value by adding low value plus 1 now <clears throat> if you guys remember even partition function is going to be called uh, recursively for the first case low value will be zero for the next case it might not be zero so that is the reason another reason why i am not taking any particular values as it will be a very confusing thing for this particular video and <clears throat> just try to understand what's happening in particular statement until and unless a of i value is less than p value where p holds the a of low imagining at as a of 0 until and unless a of i is less than equal to a of 0 and i less than high where i is adding low plus 1 that is 0 plus 1 is 1 and high value is nothing but the number of elements inside of array if that condition satisfies we are going to get inside of the while loop in a while loop and we are going to increment the i value by 1 now after this condition gets false we are going to come outside of the inner while loop and after this we have another while loop which has the condition until and unless a of j value is greater than p value now if you guys remember j holds the value as high where high is nothing but the number of elements inside of array for the first case where p holds the value as the first element inside of array now when i say first element inside of array i mean when this particular function runs for the first time only now when this happens when until and unless y a of j is greater than p we are going to decrement the j value by 1 now after this particular condition returns false we are going to come outside of the inner while loop again and after this we are going to do the actual swapping part where the sorting happens and <clears throat> if you guys can see i have written a if else block where if condition says that and if i value is less than j value we are going to swap that is interchange a of i value with a of j value now to do to do this i have used the temp variable which i had declared at the beginning of the function temp value i am initializing it with a of i value to hold it on a temporary basis now after this inside of a of i we are going to a of i here it might be a of i may be holding 0 or 100 or 1000 any of that instead of a of i we are going to store the a of j even for the, as of i j may hold any of value like 1000 0 or even 5 after this after we store a of j inside of a of i we are going to store inside of a of j that is temp if you guys remember inside of temp we had earlier stored a of i now that's how this swapping works no big deal you will understand it is quite easy now after this if i of if i is not less than j we are going to directly focus on to the else block and in this case we are going to even swap values even for this case and but this time we are going to swap the e of low value with e of j value instead of e of i now as we did before we are going to temporarily we are going to initialize the temp variable by e of low now even low may hold any particular value now inside of e of low we are going to store the e of j 
and after that inside of a of j we are going to store the temp that has a of low now after this we are going to return the j value directly <coughs> which will uh, cause this particular function to stop executing and directly return up the j value what usually what happens is whenever this particular function runs is it is going to return an index inside of an array the array that has been passed so that is what happens now that is for the partition function this completes our quick sort class implementation now let's just look jump on to the other class that is source now let me just collapse this and expand this particular class that is source and inside of source class i have just implemented the main function which is responsible for the core implementation of our program in which we are going to use the quick sort objects and scan values from the user and display provide time taken to sort the elements and even display the sorted error sorted error array sorry if i try to open up the main function i have at the beginning three different types of variables one is an n value which is an integer variable which holds the two value as default after that i have declared an array with the maximum values as of 5000 as random numbers of integer data type and after that i have two variable that is start time and stop time of integer data type long now i'm going to use this particular variables to store the time taken for elements to be sorted and after that i have declared three objects at the first i have declared a random number generator objects using the random class which is provided by java built-in and i have named it number generator i have after that i have declared a scanner called scan which is used to scan the inputs from the user because we are going to scan the inputs from the screen that is from the user we are going to pass the system dot in as a parameter and after that we are going to declare the object of our class quick sort as qs after this we are going to scan the n value from the user that is enter n value and as it is an integer variable we are going to use the statement scan dot next int now for this particular video we are going to assume that user enters n value as 2 after this we are not going to scan any particular values from the user so i'm going to close the scanner we don't need it anymore after this if you look at these particular statements what i'm trying to do here is I'm trying to generate random integer at the same time just after that I am even displaying the array so rather than creating two different arrays for generating a random numbers and for displaying the random numbers I have included them in a single array in this for loop which will run until and unless it is equal to n value inside of it I'm generating the random value for the ith index with the range of 1000 now as i'm using the random number generator object and i'm using the next int this particular statement will generate any random number which um, ranges from 0 to 1000 after that i'm displaying the number being generated for the ith index and to get the cursor at the new line i'm using the print ln function which will get us the cursor at the new line by printing nothing after this if you look at these three lines which where i'm implementing the main core in functionality of the problem statement where at the first line of these particular three lines i'm calculating the i'm capturing the time actually in terms of nano values and storing it in the start time that is the reason why I'm doing it is because to calculate the total time taken to sort the n values and after that I am calling this quick sort function sort function inside of quick sort class 
by passing the parameters as random numbers that is our array which holds the random numbers low value as zero as i mentioned earlier why we have passed it as zero because we even want to sort the zeroth index so if you pass as one now our particular sort function will not will not bother of the zeroth index so we need to pass it as zero and high value as n minus one that is the total number of elements inside of array after this particular function line executes we are going to capture the time again and this helps us to calculate the time taken to sort after this we are going to display the time taken to sort in seconds that is by using a formula now as you can see we have captured the time in nano values we need to convert it into seconds of the formula is if you just subtract the start stop time minus start time you will get the time taken to sort in nanoseconds to convert it into seconds we are going to use the formula nanoseconds divided by 1 e9 where e stands for mathematical notation exponent and the formula in the implementation part is stop time minus start time will give us the nanoseconds it took to executes divided by 1 into 10 raised to 9 that is the nano <clears throat> the statement says time taken to sort n values where n is 2 that is time taken to sort two numbers is this particular function executes and most probably it will return 0 because just to uh, sort two elements it is going to be very quick so we don't need seconds of time to sort it and after this we know that the array has been sorted and we are the printing we are printing the sorted array and after that we are getting the cursor at the new line by printing nothing and using the println function now that completes the implementation of the main function and eventually they completes the implementation of the entire program now let's just look at the output and how it works and what are the different cases of the output so for checking my output i'm going to use my terminal so here my, here i'm on my terminal as i have used for earlier programs as well let me just start by invoking the java interpreter so file name is source.java if you look at the source code on my github repository let's try to compile and it's executing perfectly and it's asking me the n value which says uh, which is used to store the total number of elements inside of array let me just start by giving the smaller value that is 2 now if you see it may it sorts it in a very fast fashion uh, array before sorting is 469 and 73 these are the elements before sorting and after that it is showing us the time taken to sort two numbers is zero seconds now as today's pcs and imacs are very high in configuration so it will not take any of the time when it comes to seconds so it will most of the time 99.99 percent of the time it will be zero seconds as well now let's just try to increase the n value a bit let's just take 10 and try to sort as you can see and even this time it has took zero seconds and it is displaying us the array before sorting and array after sorting now after this let's try for huge values let me just clear this let's just try for huge values say we type n value as 4500 that is total number of elements that is to be generated is 4500 now this might get messy let's try to understand it so here these all elements are being sorted if you just i scroll up a bit okay so here we have entered the n value as 4500 it is displaying us the array before sorting as you can see we have 
4500 values here after this if you look at this particular line it is showing us the time taken to sort 4500 is still zero seconds so now that's quite impressive now if you try to sort it for like 1 lakh elements 10 lakh elements or more than that now that might that time it might take a time now for that you need to modify the program a bit that is the you need to increase your the array limit for a higher purpose after that it is giving us the sorted array and <coughs> until the elements so if you guys can see our random number generator has generated repeated values I think it has generated every value more than four times yes even 988 so that's it for the output now this completes the implementation and execution and even the understanding of how the problem statement works how quick sort works how divide and conquer technique works that's it for this video guys i hope you guys like this video if you guys like it hit that like button share it with your friends and let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have a great one.